Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Teresa of Avila. Let us pray in this Mass that like St. Teresa, we may also give our whole life totally to Jesus and we may discover God as enough for us. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your Spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the Church the way to seek perfection. Grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what can we say that Abraham found our ancestor according to the flesh? Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast. But this was not so in the sight of God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So also David declares the blessedness of the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not record. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, so many people were crowding together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the leaven, that is, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that can do no more. I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, 
be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, since Tuesday, our gospel has been the discourse of Jesus against the Pharisees and the scholars of the law because of their hypocrisy. And from the words of Jesus, we could see how disgusted he was of the Pharisees and the scholars of the law because they were so image conscious. They were so concerned about how they are seen by other people they are so concerned about the image that they project before other people that they seem not to be concerned at all at the image that they, pro that they project before God. Ang mahalaga lang sa kanila ay kung ano yung nakikita ng ibang tao sa kanila. At nakakalimutan yata nila na mas mahalaga yung nakikita ng Diyos. That is why in our gospel today, Jesus said, There is really nothing concealed that will not be revealed. No secret that will not be made known. Wala naman talaga tayong maililihim sa Diyos. God sees our hearts. God can read our minds. God sees everything in us. Pwede tayong magpanggap sa harap ng ibang tao. Pwede pa nga nating lukohin ng ating sarili. Pero hindi hindi natin maloloko ang Diyos. God sees everything in us. And in our first reading today, this is also what is told by St. Paul to the Christians in Rome. By giving the example of Abraham, our father in the faith, St. Paul said that God sees not just the works of Abraham, that is why he was justified. God sees Abraham's faith. God sees what is in the heart. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of one of the powerful women in the Catholic Church, St. Teresa of Avila or St. Teresa of Jesus. She lived at a time when there was so much political, social, and religious upheavals. And in a world dominated by men, even in the church, ruled by men, Teresa proved that she was her own woman isang matibay at malakas na babae. And she showed this specially when she initiated reforms within the female Carmelite order. 
And with the help of St. John of the Cross, she also reformed the male Carmelite order. Sa pamamagitan ng katatagan ng babaeng ito, nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa kanilang order sa mga Carme Carmelites. At ito ay tumahak patungo sa landas na nais ng Panginoon para sa kanila. St. Teresa of Avila gave so much emphasis on the interior life, on the mystical life, and that is our life in relationship with God. St. Teresa would always give value to the image that God sees. My dear brothers and sisters, we live in a world that gives so much value in images. In fact, image building has evolved into a huge business. Lalo na ho ngayong panahong ito ng eleksyon, yung mga gumagawa ng image na ipoproject ng mga kandidato para sila iboto, na ko napakalaking business ho niyan. But if we are concerned about how other people see us, should we not be more concerned about how God sees us? Kung ang iniisip, kung iniisip natin palagi, ano ba ang tingin sa akin ng ibang tao? Ano ba ang itsura ko sa harapan nila? Ano kaya ang impression ng aking boss, ng aking superior, ng aking kapwa-tao sa akin? Hindi ba dapat mas alalahanin natin kung ano kaya ang impression ng Diyos sa atin? If we are so conscious about the image that we project before people, my dear brothers and sisters, should we not be more concerned about the image we project before God? Please stand. Let us pray to our Father in heaven with complete trust, so that free from all paralyzing fears, we may have the courage to build up His kingdom. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our church leaders may not be discouraged by the trials and challenge of renewal, but be more committed and zealous in bringing about change and conversion in society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That those who are persecuted because of their belief in Jesus Christ may be strengthened and sustained by their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we Christians may find joy in our faith, even when we are faced with trials and distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who suffer in this life especially the sick, may experience the healing comfort of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may reap the rewards of their labor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers 
and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father of all times and seasons, give us courage and strength that we may persevere in doing good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May your offerings, O Lord, be acceptable to your majesty, to whom the devoted service of St. Teresa was pleasing in such great measure through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Teresa and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you 
Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord our God, that to your obedient family, whom you have fed with the bread of, bread of heaven, may follow the example of St. Teresa and rejoice to sing your mercies for all eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.